Talking to Death is released weekly, every Wednesday, and brought to you absolutely free. But if you want ad-free listening and exclusive bonuses, subscribe to Tenderfoot Plus at tenderfootplus.com or on Apple Podcasts. Talking to Death is a production of Tenderfoot TV and iHeart Podcasts. Listener discretion is advised. Mike. Pain. Where are you? I'm in LA. I didn't sleep for shit last night, but this Airbnb is kind of kind of doing it right now. Bunch of natural light. I had to when I got up, I just pulled down like every damn shade there is in here because it was too much light. I want to know just like just like off the rip here. Knee jerk reaction. Do you believe in ghosts? Do I? Mhm. Yeah, since Radio Rental, yeah, I definitely do. I didn't before. I even though I've kind of seen one, I didn't really believe in them at all. Oh, that's right. You had uh, a, a weird story, right? For sure. And it was like green, glowy, like, you know, haunted mansion style. And it went, you know, it was it was ahead of me. It was dark outside. I was driving to go drink beer at a park when I was like 16. Whoa, and it, bro. I know. It's crazy wild times, right? And it it went across the road. And I realized, like, and it was going, like, the speed of a guy on a bike, right? And it kind of looked like that size, right? And it went across, and I was like, who's who's riding a bike this late? Going from, and it was going from, a like, a greenhouse nursery to somebody's front yard, right? That was what was on either side of the street. Then when I got to where it was, I was like, wait a minute. There's a fence on either side of the road, and it went through it as if there was no fence and when I tried to, when I got close enough, I tried to like see where it went and it just like disappeared. And I was like, what, how did, whatever that was, how did that go through two fences? Like they weren't there. So it like, it was like translucent, it moved through like an object or, or what? Yeah, it was, it was like a hundred feet away. So it was hard to make out, but yeah, it totally just went through one fence on the left side of the road and then across the road and then a fence on the right side of the road. Like they weren't there. Never slowing down, never going over it, never climbing over it. It was just through the fences. I feel like since I've known you, you've been more of a skeptic of things just over the years. But I, I do remember like definitively one time where we both received this picture or a series of pictures uh, from one of the radio rental stories. Um, and I remember like reading the post and then clicking the picture, which we get into in today's episode later but do you feel like that was sort of a i don't know did that, that changed the way you felt about it because i mean yeah. it's a real picture it's it's not doctored i don't think it's a live photo from an iphone no it's real and it's unexplained and it's hard to wrap your head around and when i saw that one on top of all the other radio rental stories we went i mean we went we spent so many years going around and listening to people's like unexplained stories with that and then that photo was the final thing where i was like all right, this there's something to this. I don't know what it is. It could be aliens. It could be ghosts. It could be who knows some some other dimension. But yeah, that 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 one. I remember going back to my hotel room in Denver, and I could not sleep, and I kept looking over my shoulder. Like I was looking at it on my phone. I was like, "This you had scaring little, little nightmares or what? A little bit, a little bit <laughs> of nightmares. No, it was it was terrifying, and I didn't want to be alone. Today's guest is. I would just call him an expert in the paranormal. His name is Aaron Sagers. This guy has done the real deal, though. The stuff that, you know, we, that I would joke about doing, like, yeah, I'll go to the haunted house. But when I get there for real, I'm like, ah, never mind. I don't want to actually confront some demon or some shit. I'm good. I don't want to, I don't want to conjure that up in my life. But this guy has tons of experience going to some of the world's most haunted places. He's a TV personality. He has a really cool podcast called Talking Strange. Um, we had some really just fun conversations that went into the philosophy and sort of the concept of what, what the paranormal is at all, what ghosts could be. And after a while, we end up going talking about Bigfoot. And I have a pretty strong opinion on Bigfoot, and you'll hear later. But this guy is just uh, funny as hell. And... I think that, you know, I've always been curious about the supernatural and wondering what that means or if it's some concept that we've created and we just have great imaginations and we want to exist because the world's so boring sometimes. Or is it just 
that we're scratching at the surface of something really insane that we just have no idea about, right? And so I think that we got um, we got super deep in the conversation with Aaron, and I feel like I have a more nuanced take on the whole thing now. Yeah, we get into Bigfoot, aliens a little bit, um, working in reality TV, and paranormal experiences. And I even have a paranormal experience of my own that I've never shared before that I, that I unpack for you on today's episode. And um, after you listen to it, I want you to tell me what you think it was. Because um, to this day, I don't really know. Um, or maybe I'm just, you know, being imaginative. But I had a weird, I had a weird night one time. And uh, I'm curious what everyone else thinks about it. You tell me if it's paranormal or if I just had one too many beers. This is episode 11, Aaron Sagers. Well, thank you for being here, Aaron. I, you, you are such an interesting person to me because you've done so much weird shit. <laughs> How would you even describe yourself? I uh, I don't know. It kind of depends on the the day, I guess. Um, it's funny. So I do these presentations when I go to events and like Comic Cons and stuff. And I, I put up a picture of like, this is what it looks like I do. And it's like sort of this foreboding picture of me holding a Ouija board in front of a haunted doll, like Robert the Doll down <laughs> right. the with. I'm like, but this is actually what I really do. And I post the meme of a, a Charlie Day from It's Always Sunny where he's like got the the crime the murder board and he's yeah. like just kind of going nuts I'm like that's like me most of the time I'm wandering around in my place eating Cheez-Its and talking to myself and trying to connect the dots of weird shit and my dog looking at me like I'm a crazy person but um do you, do you have a board do you actually have that wall though I right? have in the past do you because yeah. that's actually that's <laughs> yeah. kind of cool <laughs> uh, I don't know I mean I guess I would say journalist, paranormal journalist, uh, and then TV host, and then just researcher of weird shit, you know, like yeah. it's, but, and, and spooky nerd. That's, that's like my origins is just a nerd that was into all this spooky stuff. And then it somehow became a job. So as a paranormal investigator, yeah. Is this some Ghostbusters shit? Like what's going on here? Uh, you mean me personally? What do I think yeah, is going on? I mean, on? you know, like w what got you into that? Um, so it's funny because I've only really recently started talking about this. But as a kid, okay, into comic books, into science fiction, into horror, watching repeats of uh, In Search of with Leonard Nimoy, and then later Unsolved Mysteries with Robert Stack, but also like Kolchak the Night Stalker, which is before my time, but somehow I locked onto it at some point and I dug it. And so all that nerdy stuff, you know, stayed with me. But I also had weird stuff going on in my house when I was a kid. Okay. And I don't, I swear, hand to God, like, only recently started talking about this. It was only last week, in fact, I did an event. And I'm like, all right, I will give you guys the spooky origin story. But yeah, like I was, I'm the youngest of five kids. I was raised Catholic. I'm not really uh, particularly observant these days, but pretty Catholic family. Mm -hmm. And my brother, oldest brother, started getting involved in some weird stuff and actively trying to almost summon about activity. And whether or not he was successful, I don't know, or if something was already lingering in our house. What was he doing that was weird? So it's, you know... You know, like the satanic panic of the 80s, which is now kind of still existing. I hate to say, like, because he was playing Dungeons and Dragons or had, uh, you know, black light posters of Iron Maiden on the wall. You know, that's not what led to it, even though he did have that shit. No, he <laughs> right. just like was an angry teenager okay. that actively he wanted some sort of control. And I think he was like trying to find grimoires. I doubt he found anything really good. I just think that intention, that anger and intention and wanting to bring about something, hmm. he described it as like he felt like he had conjured something that was almost electrical looking, like almost like this static type of entity is how he describes it. I didn't see that. I don't know. But I do know weird shit started happening in our house. And for me, being the youngest of kids, I started seeing stuff, including this very tall figure in my doorway of the bedroom I shared with my middle brother. And it had this kind of crooked head. 
and sort of like a Halloween type of mask. He was very tall, and the mask itself looked almost like a Halloween devil type of mask, and yet deep lines in its face, kind of an old type of face, a some sort of um, etching or something on its chin, some sort of, uh, not a rune. Uh, and again, I was such a little kid, I was probably six years old, so I'm filling in some gaps, I'm sure, but right. some sort of etching on its chin, and almost like a fright wig type of hair. It sounds now, terrifying. It, so it is. And this is kind of like one of my theories is like when we see stuff, mm -hmm. I don't know if, if we're perceiving it as it is, or if maybe there's weird stuff out there that's like beaming itself into your brain. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what would be an image that would scare pain? And let me, Right. Present myself in that way. Well, that would definitely scare the shit out of me. Yeah. But so maybe unconsciously I had seen this at like a, a Walmart or whatever. Right. And I thought nothing of it. But now this image is implanted in my brain and whatever was presenting itself showed itself in that way. Um, and if you were if you were a skeptic, you know, you might say, well, was it sleep paralysis or, or something like right. that? From your experience, what did it feel like to you? Were the circumstances different than that? Or do it, you remember being consciously awake and seeing it? Or just, just describe that part of it. Yeah, I remember being awake. I remember being frozen in fear. And in modern times, and a lot of the shows I, I work with and just the paranormal TV business, people would probably just label that as a demon. Um, I don't really throw around this this D word, you know, because... The D word. The D word. Because I think there's so much more going on out there that's complex and different. I think there's good and bad, but I don't think it's just like heaven, hell, angels, and demons. I think it's a lot more nuanced. But I do remember being awake. I do remember seeing this thing, and being like frozen in fear. And again, I was like six years old. So like you, like, what do you do in that situation? And <laughs> as a, as a young Catholic kid, I remember I was taught two prayers. I was taught a lot of prayers and most of them I do not, I could not tell you now I could not recite, but there was two that I recall. One, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray to the Lord, my soul to keep if I die before I wake, I pray to the Lord my soul to take. Pretty dark prayer I feel like that's in, for a I feel like kid. That's in every horror movie ever. It's it, that was a pretty dark. <laughs> There's like prayer. some kid yeah. saying that down a hallway, echoing, and, and it's like, like a Catholic now I hymn. Need now to sleep. It's yeah. like that's terrifying. And um, the other prayer was because I think on some level, um, my mom, my mom said she never felt comfortable in that house. Mm -hmm. and I think on some level she knew. There was something creepy going on. So the other prayer was, if you ever encounter something bad, say, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, I cast you out. Right. And so those were the things like I was like, I was chanting in <laughs> so my head. Were you saying these things? Yeah. Well, yes. Or at least chanting it in my head or whatever. And the thing did fade, but weird stuff continued in our house. And I don't think that's like some magic bullet. Um, in fact, Priests came through, there was blessings and whatnot, and stuff still continued up until the time that we ultimately moved out of the house. Not for that reason, but we ultimately moved out of that house. Um, and then weird stuff even happened after we moved out for the following uh, residents of that place. So I think it was just a weird house. I, I mean, as an adult now, reflecting back on that, what do you make of it? I think that... Was it a kid's imagination? No, or? because all no. of my siblings... So what's funny is like, okay, so now, you know, I, I do this job where spooky stuff is part of the job. And I have one sibling that is into this stuff, but not... She's she's like more casually... My sister is into it, but not um, not professionally. And then I have one brother that will not talk about this stuff at all. And then I have another brother that's very, very religious... Okay. And then the oldest brother, um, who initially experienced this thing, he's had a lot of struggles with substance abuse, but he, I, I remember it was like right before the COVID lockdown and everything, I was talking to him and he was unfortunately quite inebriated, but he told me, he's like, yeah, uh, I, I'm sorry that it caused problems with the family and everything. He's like, but you know, 
I, I still think that that thing is out there and I still talk to it. So still talk to it. Yeah. So what does he, what do you mean? Like he's I, communicating with this thing as an adult. I think the struggles he has had with substances mm-hmm. reflects still on someone that's trying to have control, have some sort of like, okay. Some sort assert some sort of control over his life or whatever. Um, do you think the link there is more likely that the substance abuse is lifting some sort of veil or blurring reality in some way? I think that um, I don't necessarily know that they're connected, but I think there's just something uh, really something hurting inside of him. Mm-hmm. And, and in my experience, I think that sometimes this activity can prey on your needs, your weaknesses and things like that. And I think maybe that's what's happening with him potentially that it's, it's not necessarily lifting a veil. It's not um, that the substance abuse and whatever haunting or whatever it is are connected. But I do think it can prey on that weakness, you know? If you, if you were to sum up your viewpoint on all things Mm -hmm. paranormal in just a couple sentences, what would it be? I don't think we have a clue what's going on. I think that there's, everything is kind of fair game. Um, I've traveled around enough. I've explored enough. I've talked to a lot of people and I think that there's a lot of things connected, but we ultimately don't really know what's going on. Um, I'm but, you're gonna, also, you're, but you're also saying that there is something going on. Oh, I think there's, yeah. So you, you threw the word out skeptic. Um, mm-hmm. I think there's a spectrum of uh, belief, if you will. And on one hand is unquestioning, unwavering belief, almost dogmatic. Uh, and I find that problematic. If you're Wanting just, to believe. Not even just wanting to believe, but blanket belief. The, the, that's one end of that spectrum. That's in everything these days, right? That's everything. And I find that problematic. Mm-hmm. And on the other end of the spectrum is cynicism, total non-belief. Mm-hmm. But where I try to be in the middle and where I think a lot of people actually end up is sort of sliding scale, but open-minded, Sure. but asking questions and being skeptical. Skepticism is a good thing. It's not a dirty word. Right. But I've had crazy shit happen to me that I do not think I have an explanation for, but I've also been in plenty of places with leaky plumbing and bad wiring. You know, I don't think yeah. everything is a ghost or a Bigfoot or an alien or whatever. Right. <laughs> so, exactly. Uh, and I'll steal a line from a friend of mine, um, John Tenney. I like his philosophy that... The stuff you think is weird is probably weirder than you think. I like that line. Yeah, I wish I'd come up with it. Damn, it's just a cut good out, one. cut out the attribution part. Right? Yeah, <laughs> like you. Said, My, I, said, I, said, I heard I, it from you yeah. first. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's a, there's a lot of in between spaces there where weird things are happening. There, there's so many just ties with spirituality and religion mm-hmm. when it comes to paranormal stuff, even UFOs and aliens. Yeah, and. The the older I've gotten and the more I've looked into stuff like this myself, I'm convinced that one day science will explain everything. Mm-hmm. And, you know, e- even if you think about a UFO that was there and then just gone, usually the way that it's described by someone who saw that is that it was literally there and then gone. Not necessarily completely took off, mm-hmm. but it was uh, it went somewhere else to another dimension or something. And maybe as vast as the universe is this way, which we're learning is only bigger and bigger than we thought it was before. Mm -hmm. It's equally as vast this way or something where there's layers of dimensions, which it sounds crazy a little bit, but is it though? No, nothing really. I don't automatically dismiss anything as crazy anymore because I do think what you're talking about, like like the word ghost, okay? Mm-hmm. I find a very, it's almost very limiting. It's like this umbrella term because, okay, is a ghost an echo in time, like some sort of energetic footprint? Like an imprint. Or an imprint. Yes. Is a ghost 
a your dead aunt Edna coming back to visit you? Is a ghost something that God, has? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> always hated Aunt Edna. Uh, is Go a, away. <laughs> is a ghost a someone that has unresolved issues that's stuck here either voluntarily or involuntary? Right. Or is a ghost a time slip? Something that's continuing to exist in its own time, mm-hmm. and meanwhile we are the ghost to it. Yes. Is a ghost something from another dimension? Is a ghost uh, something else entirely? And my answer is like, yeah, maybe all of those things, you know? Yeah. It's like, so all of this weirdness could kind of be coinciding. So the people that think aliens are from another world versus another dimension, maybe both. Yeah, but that that other world may just be a dimension. I think they also can simultaneously exist. There, there could be some other Earth way out there. I mean, statistically, it's very possible. We'd be insanely lucky if we were the only ones physically in this realm of all the galaxies out there. How boring would that be? If, I mean, if, that would if, just if we are be it. so disappointing. Yeah. I mean, I guess we... Yeah, that would just suck. It'd be like, what a waste of space. Like, yeah. God, like, no one else could figure this shit out. And Come we on, clearly right? haven't. It's not yeah. like, you know... We can't be the best at this shit. If we are, then that's that's not good. We're definitely, yeah, we're definitely maybe the test program, the pilot program, you know? And there's there's other ones right. out there that have done way better. Uh, I'm I'm kind of borderline convinced that we must have, you know, just a little bit outside of our solar system, maybe there's um, just caution tape or uh, construction cones around our area saying like under construction or you know don't approach earth like these guys it's like you can go there but they're wild yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like we're the best guys are still figuring <laughs> yeah. it out and i mean they'll shoot your ass down too <laughs> they're not true. even playing around <laughs> but i i mean yeah like it, the the stuff that just in the last few months i've experienced has made me kind of question that that paradigm. So it's constantly shifting. What do you mean? Me. So you had, you've had recent experiences that are unexplained or something or what? Yeah. Things that I can't explain. Um, Give me an example. So one, uh, a couple months ago, I was at a location. I think it was um, Belvoir Winery, which used to be this odd fellow's home. Okay. It's in um, outside of Kansas City. And I was leading a group of people. It was an appearance kind of thing. I was leading a group of, um, you know, uh, folks through a location that was said to be haunted. Like a spooky ghost spooky tour ghost. thing. Yeah, it was like, so you do some of these events and, you know, you are you give a presentation, you talk to people, and then at night they ask, like, some of the TV folks to lead people on a paranormal investigation. Sure. And and I love doing it. Like, it's, it's fun. Cause, it does sound fun. I mean... On both sides. I'm getting paid to do something that I used, you know, it's, it's getting getting paid to do it as opposed to trespassing when I was a kid, you know, like it's kind of cool to walk around <laughs> right, old yeah. building and be the authority on it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like, so anyhow, we're doing in a, a audio session, trying to get some electronic voice phenomena. Are those things real? I, I've had weird stuff happen with it. Right. And it's like, this is why I also try to present myself. I say paranormal journalist, researcher and whatnot. I don't bill myself as a ghost hunter or paranormal investigator, even though I go do those things. Sure. You know, but but we were doing this thing where we were sure getting some weird voices and whatnot. I'm like, okay, that's odd. I don't know what that is. But the strangest thing is I set a recorder down far end of a hallway. It was a recorder I have used for a long time. I know how this thing works. Mm-hmm. Which one was it? Do you, do you remember? It was a, an old Sony IC recorder. It was a digital recorder. Okay. And I forget the precise model, but I started using it. Onboard speakers on it and just. Yeah. 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 Okay. And it was actually one that I used when I was first starting out as like just a regular reporter. Yeah. Like doing regular interviews, not looking for ghosts or whatever. One of our, our producers uses a, like like a old Sony, and you you actually recently bought a new one, but like the old ones like works like a charm. And it is it has a sound to it. It's kind of cool. Yeah. It is great, and um, it picks up. Uh, noises from pretty far away. I was a very uh-huh. sensitive mic, onboard mic. But what was weird about this session was I set the recorder down, I walk away, I join this group of people, and I'm like, okay, I've set the recorder down the hall. We're trying to establish contact if something is here, if something wants to say hi to us. Or so I'm doing this session, trying to have a conversation with whatever is out there. 
This goes on for several minutes and I go and I pick up the recorder. I'm like, okay, walking back to the recorder, I'm picking it up, I'm shutting it off and I'm voicing all of this. So that way there's no stray sounds that might be mistaken as some sort of anomaly. So recorded for about eight minutes and when I play it back, you hear my intro. This is Aaron, I'm at Belvoir Winery, I'm setting this recorder down. Okay, I'm walking away, those are my footsteps as I walk away, okay. And instead of eight minutes of audio, you hear my intro overlap with my outro. So, and I'm setting the recorder down, I'm walking away, and then you get me saying, okay, and then I'm walking back and I'm picking up the recorder and shutting it off. There was eight minutes of missing time there, and it overlaps. It's not a stop. It's not like a hard stop on the audio. Instead, it overlaps. There was no voice activated function on it. There was no, no one messed with this audio in between. I've used this recorder a lot. I know how the device works. Uh, Could it be some sort of glitch in the recorder? Possibly, but it had never happened before. Hasn't happened since. It was almost like eight minutes was just gone and overlapping with other, with my, the rest of my voice. It was now a 20 second file. I, even though I had set it down and was recording this whole time, mm-hmm. all you get is 20 seconds of me setting up the audio session, overlapping with me shutting it off, me coming back and shutting it off. And it was not a stop in the file. There was not like a hard stop. It was all one file. There was no click, no shut off. It, I, I'm telling you, man, and it sounds weird to <laughs> no, even describe, weird, but it was yeah. like missing time. And other people were around me and witnessing this whole thing. And they're like, yeah, we don't know what happened either. So this wasn't part of the show. No, part of the no, gig. no, no, no. So, like, so, but it got your intro and outro, meaning yeah. that it was, it was recording at this point in time and that point of time. Partially. But yeah. Like it's it like it didn't just shut off and stop recording. It got the end of your shit, too. Yeah. It was like so, I was talking over myself that intro and outro it was like those overlapped so what'd you make of that i don't know um i've tried to explain as much as possible and anybody that's that's checking out this episode please like if you i I can even provide the model number at some point the sony ic i forget which one it was i don't know but i do think that weird stuff happens from a time perspective with whatever it is we're dealing with, with this unexplained phenomena. Um, If you want to go just strictly in the ghosty territory, maybe the ghost didn't want to answer questions and fucked with the audio. He said, I'm good, um, but this is all you get. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, maybe. Sorry, Aaron, but not today. And I don't know, but having doing this so much and being in so many locations and being pretty... Uh, tuned into, I think, what's going on. The fact that this happened, it kind of, it's it's peculiar to me. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is. And I, I know the recorder you're talking about, if that happened to us, and I mean, we make podcasts for a living, dealt with tons, thousands, tens of thousands yeah. of audio files. I've never heard of something uniquely like what you're describing. Um, and it is strange that it happened in a haunted place when you were talking about that. And but all all those things could be coincidences, but it's yeah. still strange as hell. And I'm not sitting here saying, right. it's a ghost, you know, yeah, or we it's got a, him. Yeah. a temporal anomaly. I'm just saying, I don't understand it, and it is weird. And And whatever it was... It was anomalous for me, you know, it was anomalous for my experiences, you know. I, I've always like since I was a kid, I've always thought that there was something else going on, you know, just more than we can see, more than we know. But I never really had any of my own experiences as a kid that convinced me of ghosts or anything paranormal. But there was there's a few things that have happened to me in my life or things that I've seen that made me go, okay, what the hell is this? And so I have a show called radio rental, which I've been on your show yeah, to we've talk talked about. about. Yes. Where I basically just talk to different people across the country who have their own 
weird personal experiences and strange stories from near death to even the realm of paranormal. There was this one story, um, this lady who was running in Hawaii and she was describing this, this thing that was captured on her phone by her friend and she didn't realize it till later, but she remembers consciously having this pain in her in her leg or her knee mm-hmm. at the exact time this series of photos was taken. So I, I was sent this story by this person, and I remember being on my couch, uh, laptop up, and I read it, and I was like, "All right, I mean, that would be pretty scary." And she's like, and she, and she said, "I've attached the." the live photos, like the iPhone live photos. I'm like, oh, okay. And I'm not going to lie to you. When I, when I clicked it, it was way scarier than I thought it was. And the first thing, I mean, I'm getting like goosebumps right now. The first thing I did was like, look behind me. Like, oh my God. And so I want to, I actually, I saved it on here. I I know which photo you're talking about too. It's one of the few things that I've seen on a, on any media that is, convincing to me that it's either otherworldly or something and i have the live photos from her iMessage. i have all the data this is not some doctored shit so i know that it's real personally but yet what is your take on this thing have you heard about this story well i i heard your episode of it and mm-hmm. that clued me in on it and the First off, the live photo of it is especially compelling. And this is creepy as hell. Like, this is... <laughs> that's that's a paranormal technical term. Creepy AF. Uh, <laughs> right. It's, this, yeah, this is classified as creepy as fuck. And it also fits within... I know um, the, the caption is Night Marcher. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that is a Night Marcher or not, but that fits within that lore of that area of Hawaii. And yeah, I, I find that very compelling. Um, I will say I I did a, just a simple Google search mm -hmm. of night marchers and a lot of, there's a lot of artwork that's super old and it kind of looks like a night marcher. You know, if you were a skeptic, which, you know, I posted this on the radio rental Instagram and I've had a lot of people go in there and like, that's obviously a person. And, and I'm, I'm thinking, z- zoom in there, buddy. Let, to me, it would be even scarier if it was an actual person because it doesn't look like a person. Like not. Yeah. I'm not saying it's a person that looks weird. I'm saying it doesn't look like a human. It, it it's its facial features aren't human looking to no. me. And if in the live photo, if you you know, when you press down on it you can kind of see it emerge where it for a moment seems translucent, seems translucent in between the brush. So I I don't know, but that to me, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a compelling piece of evidence. Uh, So journalistically, and again, like I had plenty of a career as a journalist before the paranormal stuff became part of uh, the profession, you know, before non paranormal. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, still weird, but, uh, yeah, yeah. The, and I've interviewed a lot of people. I talk to people all over the world and I still do outside of paranormal stuff. I do other pop culture things and then also interview people for other things. And I feel like I have a finely tuned bullshit meter. I also, and I think you can relate to this. Like when you're speaking to people, there's a certain, you pick up a little bit on the psychology of people and there's people that might actively be trying to pull one over on you. There's some people that are telling a story Which I've seen yeah, and yeah. experienced. And there's people that are trying to tell you a story that you might think is kind of flawed, but they believe it. Yes. And then there's that legit level of like, they're telling a story they believe it, but also this is a thing that actually happened to them, which makes them a little bit more compelling. And I don't think that everyone out there telling these stories of the strange and unusual, I don't think they're all delusional, and I don't think they're all trying to pull a scam on someone. I think 
they there are actual things taking place. And then add to that, we're talking about cultures that when you separate the labels from, you know, take away Night March or whatever, other cultures have folklore, have stories of very similar phenomena globally, peoples that have never interacted with one another. So when you start seeing this repetition, when you start seeing these patterns from lore and amongst people themselves telling stories, it starts making me think, there's something here. There is truly something going on here because not everybody is trying to pull a scam. Yeah. I mean, I would say that the most compelling stories I've heard in this realm were all people who were not foaming at the mouth to tell me the story. Mm-hmm. They oftentimes were sort of reluctant. They, you have to coax it out. Of they them. weren't excited to be here today. I mean, they wanted to tell their story, but they weren't like, all right, cool, let's go. Uh, this happened. It was a traumatic, scary thing that th- that they didn't understand, and it wasn't just super comfortable for them to relive it necessarily. But but they wanted to tell it because they've heard other people with similar stories, and they start feeling like this is a safe enough space that they can share it mm-hmm. without that total judgment. But. Yeah, I, I encounter that all the time. In fact, the ones that the stories I love the most are the ones that where the people don't really want to tell that story, where there is that reluctance, hundred percent, and you just have to coax it out of them a little bit. And that's that's unfortunately also soci- sociologically, we if you hang you know if you hang out in the bar long enough, sooner or later you know a ghost story or strange lights in the sky kind of story is going to come up. Especially and, if it's if it's with us, yes, exactly. Well, <laughs> two if, beers and we're already in yeah, there. yeah. <laughs> like like, what is up with these fuckers? <laughs> like, uh, but even if you don't mention that you do this as a job, it'll be like, oh yeah, this bar's haunted, or yeah, man, I saw this weird thing happen. Like, mm-hmm. and people will always say, well, I don't believe in any of that stuff. But there's this one time, yeah. And and from a sociological standpoint, what they're doing is they're creating that buffer to say. I'm not a weirdo. I pay my taxes. I, I go to a job, all that, you know, I'm, I'm a, a upstanding member of society. So I'm not a crazy person, mm-hmm. but I saw something crazy. Yeah. You know, they're, they're trying to buffer it to make it okay to tell that story. Exactly. Um, so just like, yeah, I mean, like, again, I think you of all people kind of get that, like whether you're talking about crimes or whether you're talking about unusual phenomena, the stories people are reluctant to tell a lot of times are the juicy ones. Exactly. Yeah. If they're that reluctant, it probably means they they're, they might not be making it up, mm-hmm. you know, unless this is some really good act, which if you're an experienced journalist and you've dealt with people for years, you can kind of tell sometimes your bullshit yeah. meter is actually worth something. It's also just such a, a big kind of swing to say that this lady who's doing an ultra marathon is going to be faking this thing based on a random bit of Hawaiian lore. It's just like, to what end? Like, to what end are you going to create that kind of story and fake that kind of thing? She also got a lot of shit for bringing up the Night Marcher thing at all. Yeah. Which, I mean, I I understand that it's, you know, it's part of the Hawaiian culture there and the lore, but she was so perplexed as to what this was that she was determined to figure it out. And it just so happened that on this island, there is this sort of legend of of these night marchers. And it does kind of look like a night marcher. So even if it's a guy in the woods with, uh, you know, covered in mud or something, then... That's equally terrifying. <laughs> to me, that's more fucking scary. Yeah. There was some guy staring at me that I didn't see who was a physical person who looked scary in the woods when I was by myself. Yeah. Well, so I do this uh, show called Paranormal Caught on Camera where people submit footage or from around the world of, of supposed phenomena, strange things happening. Do you think most of those are real? I mean, obviously, there's probably some fake stuff, but, yeah. you know, that's like, the I feel like as a viewer, you know, is it all fake? Is it like, what's your, I mean... Or can you not tell me because it's a TV show? No, I mean, <laughs> I I can tell you that I... So I try to maintain an open mind. And do I think anything can be faked? Anything can be faked. Especially now. Especially now. And 
I tend to think that, okay, are there some... My example is... You know, let's say there's a clip of something that looks like a Bigfoot or moving through the woods, right? And people are like, I don't know, that's a little too clear. That's a little too in focus. It's too good to be true. And yet, if you show them another clip where it's like a little bit out of focus, maybe it's kind of short, a little fuzzy, they'll be like, I don't know, it's just not good enough. So I think that sometimes we have to be willing to appreciate that sometimes things can be that good and actually legit, especially with the cameras documenting every moment of our lives all around us. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm looking out this window and I know there's a camera, you know, multiple cameras from that building that could probably see in all over the place. Right. So I don't, I think that there is a lot of legitimate stuff that's being sent into paranormal caught on camera. And I think there's a lot of legitimate stuff being captured out there. And, and, and hell, honestly, if I had the time and the budget, I would be scooping up all these old um, nature documentaries from the past and scouring over those to see if there's anything strange caught in the background that was missed. Um, but I, I also don't think what I don't think there's much to be gained in faking all of this stuff. I mean, some people clearly get off on that. But it can't be the majority of people. I right. mean, maybe I'm wrong there, but I get how I don't people like so. to do pranks and trick people. But it's a lot of effort that goes into that. And usually part of it is the reveal at the end. Uh, gotcha. Right. Not just some, you know, bold faced lie and just sitting back and going, ooh, hoo, hoo, like, I don't know. And again, that psychology comes into play when you're when you're talking to people and trying to get a sense of like the story behind the story, like Mm -hmm. what was happening when this, like when they don't have every single detail nailed down, when it's not an entirely clear story. Yeah. That can be interesting because people that have every detail nailed down starts to feel scripted. Yeah. This is too, you, you, you remember this too well. Right. Did you start filling in some of these gaps? Right. Did you write this story? Right. So like those little fuzzy bits, I think can be interesting. But yeah, I I think that a lot of people are capturing compelling stuff out there. So maybe there are these fakes that are moving around as well, but there is compelling stuff being captured. Do you think Bigfoot is real? So I've never met Bigfoot. I've never had a Bigfoot sighting. Damn it. I, that's I know. What I, t- I know. I what wanted are we doing to, here then? I thought, you, I thought you said you did. I wanted to like, you know, name drop all if the cool people I did. If you did and you actually did, I probably still wouldn't believe you, so it wouldn't matter yeah, anyways. Yeah. <laughs> or if I did, you wouldn't believe me. <laughs> so, I don't know. I might. I might believe you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think the science is actually, there's a guy named um, Jeff Meldrum who is a actual scientist who researched bipedal hominids. There's Maria Mayor, who is a primatologist who discovered, uh, I think it was the world's smallest primate um, in recent years. And these are people, there's Jane Goodall. There's people that are out there doing research that say, yeah, we think there is something going on. There is an undiscovered uh, uh, species of bipedal hominid that is moving around in the wilderness. Based on what science, like, based on what science, I guess. Well, and I'm not a primatologist. And I'm not I'm saying, not, yeah, yeah. But some of the compelling things is, like, look at the Patterson-Gimlin film. Mm-hmm. Um, the, I, was, I did an interview with Jeff Meldrum where he was talking about the Patterson-Gimlin film. That's a classic, you know. This is the famous, the famous Bigfoot the, the, yeah, walk, right? Perhaps the most famous, uh, I would almost say fake or not is pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's definitely the most famous paranormal footage out there. Um, you know, regardless of what anybody thinks about it, it is famous. But he said at that time, people dismissed that as far as well, and you know, the proportions are off for an ape. A the movement is off. He said, well, that was a couple years before the discovery of, uh, and I'm gonna for botch the name of the um of of the fossil it was like australopithecus that they discovered uh, okay. i think it was lucy this kind of frozen yeah okay. preserved i vaguely remember this now yeah and he said so patterson gimlin took place before the discovery of this and what they discovered when they found this lucy was oh wow okay so the, you know based on her proportions and everything she could move this way 
that kind of resembled the Pedersen Gimlin footage. So the science wasn't established at that point. The science kind of caught up a little bit after the Pedersen Gimlin film came out. And even like the fact that uh, special effects people that are like, no, back then in 19, what was it? 1962 is when that film was, was captured. They're like, there was no technology to be able to create that level of suit at that time. I thought, I thought, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I thought that this was proven to be a hoax and it was a costume or, or, so, or somebody who was a part of the film came forward and said something like that. Is yeah, that not there was, true? Or? There was, um, yeah. So was it, um, Patterson, I think Bob Gimlin is still alive. I think it was Patterson that said it wasn't legit. And so there was a split between those two guys. Um, Why would he say that if it wasn't true? I don't know. It's a, but also, where's the costume? Because I want to see it. Yeah. It was a pretty damn good job. Yeah, it was a good costume. So, and they, they'd have to still have it, right? I mean, they just threw it away. If it was, I don't know. Like, <laughs> right? Like, where is that thing? I find it. I find that piece of footage compelling. Some people are going to be like, "This guy is super gullible and will believe anything." And it's not that. It's that I just like you've got actual researchers out there saying. Yeah, we think there's something going on here. I've talked to enough people throughout the years that have had encounters with a variety of of phenomena that I think, okay, something is going on. And I do think that there is something that could be moving around those woods throughout the world, not just the Pacific mm-hmm. Northwest that we just haven't caught up to yet. And it's totally possible, and I, I could not disprove it. The only the, My biggest problem with Bigfoot is that I just cannot buy that they're just so good at playing hide and seek. <laughs> the the uh, hide and seek it, champion. It, it's crazy. Yeah. I'm like, really? I mean, uh, really? It, it, we see everything else but this thing. Like, yeah. we should have found one by now. There should be a dead one somewhere. I've spent, a, I've spent plenty of time in the woods, uh, and I'm not running into a bear every time I go on a hike. In fact, I don't know if... I have seen bear out in the wild, but not frequently. It's not like right, I'm running yeah, it's out. It's not every time or, you go to the woods, you or, see a bear. <laughs> or encountering like a bear carcass, you know? Like nature is actually very effective at breaking things down and quite quickly. So I think if there's these carcasses out there, it could be broken down rather quickly. Again, I am not. Yeah, I mean, all these things are true, though. You, yeah. You're right. Yeah, that's why I could never disprove it. And yeah. I would be amazed if holy shit, we found one and it is real and they were just good at hiding or maybe there was only 10 of them left or something. I don't know. But if there is some level of intelligence to it as well, then that would make it, you know, it would seem pretty effective at staying off the radar. But again, there's plenty of animals out there that we're not running into constantly because when we're being noisy and traipsing through the woods, they know to scatter and get out of our way. Um, So, but again, I am not a primatologist. I am like... The, the lore and the stories of Bigfoot and Sasquatch across cultures across the world is compelling to me. Yeah. And the stories I've heard from people is compelling to me because it just keeps overlapping and there is these patterns to the stories. Yeah. I also think that as um, we continue to wipe out uh, the woods, the forested areas, it's probably going to increase the likelihood that we will come upon probably a, a dead Bigfoot at some point. I mean, at least in the paranormal TV shows, which you are a part of, and they're all amazing. The, the Netflix show is awesome. Thank you. They're um, not all amazing. <laughs> well, it, the ones that you're a part of, I think, are um, 28 Days Haunted. Yeah. Uh, it's it's very cool. Very well done. Thank you. Love that show. <laughs> I feel like every, and this is not a diss, but all, every Bigfoot show that I've seen, I mean, you never see Bigfoot. And, yeah. and they're always just, you know, walking around the woods looking for something that's that they never find. At least in the, every other UFO show, you see footage of something or paranormal. You see some weird shit going on or you hear a voice. But they never find Bigfoot. They all have a story of how they saw Bigfoot one time, but conveniently never had their phone out. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think like on the spectrum, like you're saying, where you know, you want to believe something so badly or, you know, I think that that's one of those magnets as well. But also on the flip side, scientifically, maybe it's possible. And all those 
you know, scientific elements explain why it's so hard to capture. Mm-hmm. And I, I couldn't prove it either way currently. So I, I kind of take, well, first off, the paranormal TV shows, you know, I love, I, I've been fortunate to be involved with several throughout the years. I know people, and I know folks involved with pretty much every show that's out there now. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I think by and large, most of the people that I've interacted with or I consider friends or colleagues or resources do truly believe, you know, in what they're trying to do. That said, paranormal TV shows are ultimately it's it's entertainment. It's entertainment TV. And let's not forget it is a TV. Show. It is a TV show. It's like no one. It, it is something it, has to happen. Yeah, because it's a TV show. And is that kind of what you mean? Well, I don't what, mean as it's really going on or not you gotta uh, did you get a shot that looked good (laughs) it's i mean i personally have never been involved with anything that has had any kind of uh fakery taking place right then again intentionally hoaxing something yeah yeah then again the shows that i've been a part of like a lot of time i'm working as a host i'm you know i'm doing i'm not necessarily the guy that's out there doing that ghost hunt you know um but that said, okay, so paranormal TV is entertainment. And I would never say to anyone, go watch this show and choose to believe or not believe or go watch this show and say, uh, I now know how to be a primatologist or it's it's a snapshot this is of a for moment. Fun yeah. Currently when yeah. you're watching this. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. It can be I hope with a lot of projects that I've been involved with, like I love doing paranormal caught on camera because even if it's a a clip that I don't love, ultimately, if I can talk about a piece of lore in another part of the world, that's pretty freaking cool. You know, if I can introduce the notion of a night marcher or a, a, you know, a a lobosomum in, uh, in, in Brazil, you know, that's pretty cool. But still, I would never advise anyone to uh, just watch it and forget the fact that it is entertainment. Not saying that people are right. faking things left and right. Does it happen? I'm sure it has happened. Have I ever been a part of it? No. I feel like everything's happened once. So I, I'm At sure, least once. I'm sure there's been some uh, funny business taking place. Um, like with paranormal investigations, I tell people if you want to go out there and explore this stuff... The shows are entertainment, but it's not teaching you how to do that thing. Yeah. It's a snapshot of a moment. Yes. So, yeah, you can't read into it too much. I mean, I see people on, on Twitter, you know, breaking down some show. I'm like, guys, it's a, it's a show. It's, like, you know, you're not breaking down the evidence. You're just breaking down an edit. <laughs> well, it's if someone was going to do a show about being a reporter... They're going to show the sexiest moments from that job. They're not going to show. And I've been in a show yeah. like that. I mean, I, Up and Vanish, my other yeah. podcast, we, we did a, a docu-series on oxygen. And, you know, it was all real. And the realest moments were the ones where I went and knocked on the bad guy's door at the end. But there were times where we were just sitting around a table just saying shit for an edit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Like to connect A to B. But every interview I did was really there, and all the emotion is real. But we're still making a show here. And you're not seeing the hours of either researching things or trying to come up with, like, you know, what connect the dots. Like, right, like I yeah. said, the moment Putting of this me. all together and making sense of any yeah. of it, right? Yeah. Like me walking around my, again, walking around my place uh, eating cheese you don't see talking cheeses, to myself. You don't see the yeah. cheeses eating right. in your underwear right. or, and you haven't showered in five days. You don't see that. Yeah, it's like... And you shouldn't. I don't, you know, I don't want anyone to see that. Nobody of, of needs me. to be seeing that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they're seeing a snapshot of people's do, people doing these paranormal investigations. They're not seeing the full, uh, you know, investigation. And they're not, I wouldn't say, become an expert at anything by watching TV. Anything. Since I've made Radio Rental, I get asked a lot, you know, do you have your own Radio Rental story? And, you know, there is a story that comes to mind immediately every single time, but I, I've I've never told it on a podcast. But because you shared your story with me, 
I'll give you the the shorter version of it because it's kind of over a period of time. And this is what I witnessed that convinced me that there was some other shit going on for real. So this would have been in probably 2015. And I was living with my ex-girlfriend at the time. And I was a filmmaker back then doing freelance stuff. And I had a little office. It was shitty. But I would stay there late and edit stuff. I was there late this night, and I told her I was probably going to be there till like 2 a.m. I had a deadline in the morning, and right as I'm getting into my car, heading home, she uh, calls me, and I answer. She's like, hey, are you on the way home? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm leaving now, and she just sounded very concerned. She's like, well, can you, can you hurry? And I'm like, uh, yeah, like, is everything okay? I'll tell you when you get here, and, I'm, and then she hangs up, and I'm like, well, well, shit, like, is there, are, are you like being held hostage right now? Is there someone like robbing the house? Like, what am I going to be confronted with when I get here? And so it was a agonizing 15 minute drive. I get there, unlock the door, just turn here. And she's sitting on the bed and she is white as a sheet and clearly terrified. And I'm like, okay, what's going on? What happened? And she said that she was folding clothes and was like down on her knees and putting clothes into the the drawers. And she felt a hand on her shoulder. And and so my first thought is, okay, like an actual hand, like, like a physical hand. She's yes. Okay. I'm, I'm going with you. I'm believing you on this. And it didn't end there. She said she got freaked out. And so she turned the lights off to go to sleep and she got under the covers and one of these standing lamps we have in the room fell over and broke. And I look over and it's, it's back standing up now, but the glass on it had broke. I was like, okay. And so I walk over there being a little skeptical and I just give it a little nudge and it's not going anywhere. I was like, come on, like, why isn't this just falling down right now? I really wanted it just to crash with just a little bit of wind, but it would have taken some decent force to push it over. And so I was obviously terrified for the rest of the night. I'm like, okay, cool. My new apartment is haunted, right? And so I didn't sleep a wink. And for the next two weeks, weird shit kept happening, but it was always kind of happening seemingly to her and, and not really me. The two things that I did experience were I, I went, was in, I was in my kitchen and I went to my bedroom and I came right back and the fridge was open. And I, I'm positive, I, mean, I, t- I totally could have just goofed and left it open, but it scared the shit out of me. Like, I didn't do that. That's one thing. You could explain that. The other one was I was laying in bed one night and my bathroom was probably like mm, from me to Mike. And I heard this weird sound. And I tried to recreate it later. And the best I could come up with was if you take a quarter and you just rub it on the countertop of like an apartment bathroom. And it just sounded like it was a, this scratching sound that was very unique that wasn't like a creak. And it was audibly coming from inside of the room, not from across the wall, whatever. The last straw was one of our mutual friends came over. You know, we were in a studio apartment. Uh, it, we didn't have very much room to sleep. He just slept on the floor with some sheets and pillows. I wake up in the morning to get to make some coffee. I see him and he is terrified looking. And I see this big, huge potted plant that we have just fucking broken soil everywhere on the ground next to him. I was like, what the hell happened? He said, I literally just woke up and this thing just tipped over and broke. I was like, what? I'm like, okay, if you're pranking me, this is some bullshit because this is a lot to clean up. And that's like an expensive pot from like my mom. (laughs) And I'm like, okay, fuck this. We're burning sage. We're doing all this stuff. And someone had told me, one time, and I don't remember who it was, but I was willing to try anything. I was like, there's something going on in my house. Real or not, I'm over this shit. Uh, someone told me, 
and this could totally be some bullshit. It probably is. If you take a glass of water and you put a knife in it, that maybe it'll go away. I was like, whatever, I'll try anything. So I did this and a full day went by because shit was happening every day and we were good. And so then she went out of town the next day and I was woke up around two in the morning to this screaming sound. And it was definitely a, a, a man's voice and it was coming from outside in the hallway. I opened the door and I see 10 other neighbors with their doors open and my next door neighbor who I'd never met or even seen yet was running around the the hallway screaming just bloody murder and we were all freaking out didn't know what to do someone called 911 paramedics came they literally strapped him to a stretcher and and took him off and I, and I was like holy shit what what happened like it was a mental breakdown I, I don't know and so I told my friend about this that next morning before the Falcons game and later on that night, we came back, sad that we lost and didn't go to the Super Bowl. And confidentially, I was going to buy some weed. And um, I, w- I went to my car first to get some, uh, like some cash out. And as I'm walking back to my apartment door, I hear a voice coming from inside of his apartment. And so because of what I witnessed the night before which was really scary and you know it seemed like he was unsafe in that state i put my ear to the door and i could hear him talking to himself the way that i heard it and i was picturing cuz we had the same apartment it, it wasn't like he was talking to himself it seemed like he was talking to something else that wasn't there but that he was convinced was or he or was there he wasn't like talking to himself he was like threatening something else to stop like or or asking something else to stop that wasn't him and it just got louder and louder and i was like holy shit like is someone in there is he being you know held up by a knife right now it's what it sounded like so i knocked on the door I was like hey are you okay complete silence and i was like uh oh that does- doesn't sound good. And I, I, I had my ear there for 30 more seconds. Absolutely not a peep. Then my friend's like, cool, let's go. The guy's ready to meet for weed. I'm like, okay. And so the whole ride there, I'm thinking, I'm like, that, that didn't feel right. That didn't sound right. I, I didn't like that. And so all of 25 minutes goes by and I come back and I go out on my balcony and I hear, sirens and i'm like i i just know they're coming here and sure enough they did and i looked down and and this is horrible he had jumped from the balcony and had had pierced himself through like i I may learn later the details but he was basically just pierced inside this metal fence that has the sharp top to it. And they had to use the jaws of life to get him out. And it was fucking terrifying. And so months later, he ended up surviving. But his, his mother was coming to get his stuff. And she was asking. She saw me leave the apartment. And she just asked what I saw. Because it was a very confusing story about a guy who according to her and every friend was totally normal, never had any episodes like this before. And it was a total freak thing. I didn't dig super into the paranormal part of anything, but I just told her literally exactly what I witnessed. But in hindsight later, as I just kind of sat with it over the years, I started thinking, what if there was any connection at all from that shit that I know was real, that I was experiencing in my apartment and then just all of a sudden ceased. And then the next thing you know, the guy next to me has this breakdown that is so out of his character and harms himself. I don't want to like make assumptions and say that that's what happened because it's a tragedy. Thankfully, they were able to I mean they were able to sue the hospital because they let he was being suicidal and they let him out too early. And I mean, it wouldn't have happened had they not let him out, but they did. But I always just it always fucked 
with me. I, like what I was experiencing, and then this happened, and you know I, I've never told it as a radio rental story because it's you know it's it's there's a family who suffered from this and it's probably you know, it's it's a permanent thing, but it was so, it was so crazy to me, and I can't help but think about weird connections. Yeah. Sorry for the long winded story, but no, no, I what love is it. Your take, I, I love. I mean, I don't love it. I'm sorry that it happened to that guy, but I mean, I love the story because it does make you wonder. It's easy to like jump to all the negative things, okay? I, and I, I do think there's weird stuff out there that's not so nice, but it does almost make you wonder. Like, did you clear it out of your place and then it went next door? You know, did it right? Did it? I mean, uh, all I know is that it something was definitively happening that was not nice or friendly in my apartment, and then it stopped, and then this happened. Mm-hmm. That's all. That's all I know factually. And from how surprised they were at this episode, I was like, "What the fuck?" I don't know. Yeah. It. It also. It's interesting how. A place, so what? It, whatever a, a ghost is, I don't think it has to be connected to some sort of tragic event that took place or some significant history or whatever. I think anywhere can be haunted. I, I bet, you know, there's probably some uh, freaking Ikea that's like loaded with ghosts that no one's paying attention yeah, to because it's an just Ikea. all over that furniture yeah. and just, the, you know. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, yes, but they, what they're not doing is assembling anything. No, they should be. But. No, but, and maybe there's attachments to something you get at IKEA. Maybe you're uh, you're gonna bring home always it. missing yeah. the one screw that you need. <laughs> you're like, why is my Frufenagen moving across the room on its own? Like, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't uh, it's order not just IKEA. Yeah. <laughs> it's IKEA's ghost. Yeah. I mean, so I don't think whatever we're dealing with has to be connected to like history mm-hmm. or bad things happening. Yeah, I, like. So I'm I live in Brooklyn and the place that I'm in is an old walk up building. Loads of history there, loads of things that have taken place, but you know, I don't think anything that I'm aware of was like uh necessarily like significant or that took place there. Yeah. But there was a time and I lived there for a while. And there was a time that I was away for a long stretch, handful of months, and came back and nothing really weird had been taking place at my apartment prior to that, but I come back in and it was almost like I picked up a a spectral squatter while, while I was gone, I come back to this apartment and then weird stuff starts happening out of nowhere. I'm like, okay, this is kind of different. Yeah. (laughs) It it very much felt like I was suddenly sharing a space with someone that hadn't been there before. Yeah. It's a not good feeling. Well, it wasn't, it was more annoying. Um, That's what I, I was yeah. more annoyed. Yeah. Like, you know, this is not my safe place anymore. And I sound, I sound nuts. Like, yeah. I called my one uncle who was like, okay, here's what you got to do. Yeah. I'm like, who's the guy who's going to def- just absolutely believe me here. But I was like, I don't feel like dealing with this shit right now. And that's it. It's like, and that's the kind of story that I love hearing from people. We said like, there's the stories that are somewhat reluctant that people are reluctant to yeah. tell. That's compelling, but also that very human reaction of like, I just can't be bothered with this right now. Like, this is just annoying. And and I was upset about yeah. it. Yeah, and it was always weird that it it never seemed to fuck with me directly, but mm-hmm. it fucked with other people who came over and my girlfriend at the time. Yeah, and I don't know if that if that's for any particular reason, but I did witness all the things that happened and I did hear and see stuff. So I know it was happening, but it was never, you know, grabbing my shoulder, but I was also probably giving off this, like, get the fuck out of here. Energy. Yeah. I, and who knows what is like going through the, the quote unquote mind of whatever you're dealing with. Who knows if like that thing, was viewing your girlfriend at the time as sort of the easy target or your friend as the easy target. That's what it and then, felt like. And I don't want to make that assumption, but it kind of felt like that. Because I was, you know, I was convinced that it was real at a certain mm-hmm. point. But I was perplexed as but I was also thankful that it was not fucking with me. But uh, it just didn't. But also, 
I almost felt like I knew that it wouldn't. So I think, you know, maybe there's some nasty business out there that finds its targets, you know, and goes after them in that way. If Ghost exists and it's us in some form sticking around, I think that like walk down the streets of New York City, if you say hi to people or tip your hat, most people are going to be like, oh, hey, Uh, some people will not say anything at all. Some people will say like, ah, fuck off, you know, but most people out there are not outwardly evil or bad. Right. And I think, why would that not be the same in the case of potential ghosts that are out there? Some are nonplussed, some are friendly, some are jerks. A few are actually And maybe it's more fragmented than that. Maybe it's not just the ghost of the grumpy grandpa who's just toying with people. It's something that doesn't even know what it is anymore. And it's just like stuck or something. And it's just doing anything to get attention or move around. And it's not really this evil thing. Mm. It's more of it's just how we perceive it because it's taunting and it's it's like scary as hell and it won't stop but maybe it's not really as malicious as it is perceived sometimes or something i i've been in some locations where my kind of theory coming out of there witnessing some weird activity my theory coming out of like places like some um prisons or places where people suffered a lot like a you Mm -hmm. know like um uh, right now, I'm thinking of um, uh, a Penhurst uh, uh, Asylum and, you know, people that suffered, had a lot of uh, mental and physical challenges. Maybe when they pass on, for some people, there has to be this almost like healing process of like, maybe there's something about the ghostly form that's like a a afterlife therapy almost like they're pro- they're working through their issues before they kind of move on to that next level whatever it might be or back to the science explains everything maybe eventually where it's some imprint yeah where it's just it was so emotional or strong that it just left a imprint An echo. In, in time and space or whatever I love what I do, and I love talking to people and getting stories out of people, and I'm fortunate that I get to travel all around the world. Like I said, when I was a kid, it was called trespassing, and now it's a profession. And Right. That's kind of badass. It's like, that is amazing, but also, you have to have a sense of humor about this. I've There's some people in the paranormal realm um, that are constantly wearing black all the time and very serious and like, well, you know this place is very haunted and the ghosts don't like it when you do that. You know, and they're getting like, intense all the time. All right, dude. Meanwhile, I'll go into a place where I'm like, Oh man. In fact, last week I was in this um, resort that was said to be haunted. And I'm like, man, I bet, but there's some pretty good parties in here. Like, uh, you know, did you guys like to party? And you start Getting interactions, you almost start getting activity when you're joking around about the weirdness of all of this. Yeah, like you go, you can't take yourself even too seriously, no. or else that even sounds maddening, right? I, I mean, and boring, like and boring. It, it's shit. like if you're gonna do this as a job and not occasionally be able to laugh at yourself and laugh at just the universe, you're kind of missing the point. Yeah, I mean. I don't really know what's going on. I have lots of ideas and theories, but I, and I think it's pretty cool out there. The universe is a pretty cool place. Mm -hmm. I also think it's freaking weird and freaking hilarious. So it is, it's absurd. Having a sense of humor about what I do and also just about the universe is necessary. Well, I appreciate that about all your work and I'm just, I'm a huge fan and I'm impressed by all the shit that you've done. And I'm looking forward to what you got coming next. And uh, let me be on your podcast next. Dude, yeah, we need to get you back on the on my show on the podcast. Do it, man. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, uh no, I you know what? Like I I like what you do and it's weird just like it's funny to me that we kind of weirdly moved in similar circles right. for a while before actually yeah. meeting one another. Yeah, totally. It, it, and then one day there was the connection made and now we're kind of in our zeitgeist bubble thing that Yeah. I mean, you were like you were like one of the first people that came to mind. Like, I need to talk to Aaron on my show because this is we'd have a fun convo. Well, what we should do is, you know, the ghosts 
ghost stories are cool. Haunted places are cool. I love it. But there is such an interesting extra level of weirdness out there Mm -hmm. that I think it would be fun to explore with you. Like when you're talking about urban legends. Yeah. When you go into out, you know, outside of New York City, just go 40 minutes down the road and you'll find places where they have these super creepy stories, super creepy lore. And I think there's something It'd be a cool dynamic there, because what I'll yeah. probably be like, I, I'm not like a huge skeptic, but I'm also not not a skeptic in the healthy sense. Mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, that's that sounds like some bullshit. But let's see. Yeah. Well, dude, but I also, don't I'll, then I'll be like, wait, never mind. It's not. Uh, but I think that, you know, that would be a fun balance. I don't we know. could go find the Jersey Devil or something. Only if we do it naked, though. That's the only way I'd ever do it. And I think that that's what the ghosts want. And that's how we're going to get some, the, some shit on tape. The stipulation. All right, yeah. Payne. All right. I guess so, this is what's happening. <laughs> let's do it. Yeah. Hey, I don't make the rules. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing I actually have but a yeah, dude, under there. <laughs> float me some ideas, man. Yeah, that, that sounds super fun. And, I mean, Mike's just as into this shit as yeah. we are. And, you know. We, we've liked that we've been able to explore, you know, outside of true crime and all the other weird stuff that we've always been into as kids, too. Yeah. So and that's if, if at the end of the day, like I don't I don't even label myself a believer. Like I say, I, I think there's something going on out there mm-hmm. um, and I don't know what it is, but, you know, have lots of ideas. But at the end of the day, let's say there is nothing else going on. And this is it. And we're just, you know, uh, meat bags. We we die. The universe is just us. If that's it. It's still pretty rad that I've gotten to do this, that we get to do this. Like, if if we're just kids playing pretend and poking around literally and figuratively in the dark, that's still pretty freaking cool. That's pretty, pretty badass. Also, I think that would say... We have such a great imagination at this point that we've convinced ourselves that there is something going on when there's not. And to me, that sounds a little wonkier than there being some little nuggets of truth in there. It makes me, um, I, I think, philosophically, thinking a lot about weird stuff and pursuing weird stuff. And weird, it, it's philosophically, it makes me a happy person, I think, Um, because I do get to play in this imaginative sandbox. And it also, I think, kind of prepares you for the the daily weird stuff in a way. Like Mm -hmm. if if a flying saucer appeared over Times Square and the aliens are like, hey, we're here on some level, I'd be like, well, I kind of expected this. I've spent, you know, uh, since like, I... What are you bringing us? Yeah, yeah. Like, all right, you're here. Uh, you but better it, have anti-gravity in there because <laughs> we are in desperate need of it. I, I think we've got a few other things we need to take care of before we get That's the... That's probably true. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get the hell out of here. That's what I'm saying. I don't know that I, we should be trusted with, like, flying cars just yet. Not um, yet. Or jetpacks, but I yeah. will take a jetpack. You you and I, we could get I mean, I, I still want to, you know test it out I, I want one but i don't think we should all have one i will most certainly <laughs> take a jetpack that everyone would say that <laughs> but you know thinking about the weird stuff also prepares you i think for the day-to-day mm-hmm. challenges in a way because you just have to laugh a little bit and like when you get stuck on the subway like i was today and you know i didn't know how long i was going to be there i, was I like, could die here it's like probably not, i'm like but, but so it goes you know yeah, right to quote Ver- kurt vonnegut it's like so it goes like it just it kind of levels you out a little bit, if that makes sense. No, I, I like that. Yeah. I don't know. Well, thanks again, man. This has been an absolute blast. And thanks for coming to me and doing it in person. I, it, it's just a fun experience, man. Dude, and let's keep talking about shit. Like, let's figure out the next move and tell me more about what you're doing. And let's yeah, figure some shit out. Well, I appreciate you having me on. Um, I also had a lot of fun and it's also a lot easier to do this in person as opposed to it is virtually where you don't have that dynamic. Yep. Uh, but yeah, man, let's go f- and tell find us- Mothman and Jersey devil and let's get real weird. Tell us where to get the hats. Oh, thank you. Uh, all right. The shameless plug time. Yeah, no, um, I, uh, I've designed some, some apparel at spooky nerd And, uh, this is the spooky nerd hat and, uh, and yeah, check out talking strange, the podcast and, uh, what paranormal caught on camera is still going on, and so is Twenty Eight Days Haunted on Netflix. Amazing, dude! Thanks, thank dude. you, thanks, man. It, man. Cheers, Appreciate man. You. 
Talking to Death is a production of Tenderfoot TV and iHeart Podcast, created and hosted by Payne Lindsay. For Tenderfoot TV, executive producers are Payne Lindsay and Donald Albright. Co-executive producer is Mike Rooney. For iHeart Podcast, executive producers are Matt Frederick and Alex Williams, with original music by Makeup and Vanity Set. Additional production by Mike Rooney, Dylan Harrington, Sean Nurney, Dayton Cole, and Gustav Wild for Cohedo. Production support by Tracy Kaplan, Mara Davis, and Trevor Young. Mixing and mastering by Cooper Skinner and Dayton Cole. Our cover art was created by Rob Sheridan. Check out our website, talkingtodeathpodcast.com. Thanks for listening to this episode of Talking to Death. This series is released weekly, absolutely free. But if you want ad-free listening and exclusive bonuses, you can subscribe to Tinderfoot Plus on Apple Podcasts or go to tinderfootplus.com.